This video is sponsored by Real Vision. There might not be a more subjective word in the English language than value. The dictionary defines value as relative worth, utility, or importance. But what does that mean for markets? Well, that's what we're going to discuss on this week's episode of Real Vision's The One Thing. What's going on investors, AK here. We all have our individual value systems that prioritize certain things. For some people, value represents moral value. For others, it represents when something is cheaper than it's actually worth. And the latter is the type of value that we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about what value in the market actually means and why some see value when the rest of the market doesn't. Mark Yusko recently came on Real Vision to discuss how value works in this new world full of algos and central bank intervention. You know, how do you compete with satellite imagery that's processed in real time? Sure. How do you compete with high frequency traders that are scalping pennies on milliseconds? How do you compete with people who, who get the first call from the treasury secretary and you don't? Um, I don't know. I'll answer that question for you. Okay. Value. Value. Ah, that's, well, that's how you, you compete. And, 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 and you are 100% right. And that is exactly why, that's where I always migrate to. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's exactly where you migrate because it's the only place you can get an edge. If you do the work and you buy assets that are below fundamental intrinsic value, you will eventually win. John Burbank takes an unconventional approach to value where he actually shuns normal value stocks and instead invests in tech stocks. And guess what? Moving from underperforming commodity stocks to the tech sector worked out pretty well for him. Check out what he had to say about it in this recent Real Vision interview. Maybe the surprise is how valuable um, how much more valuable um, the, the best, the A students in the class is what I said, that really you should just be belong the A students in the class and short the rest of the class, it doesn't matter. Whereas commodities, you know, you're looking for that, you know, something needed that has a very low cost and is, you know, cheap to transfer, but doesn't actually require, you know, tremendous, you know, ongoing sophistication. Mike Green, who's also an expert in the market, added some wise words later on in the conversation with Burbank. Yeah, no, I, I think that's absolutely correct. And I think that's, you know, what we've, what we've paradoxically seen is, is that value has actually now had its longest run of underperformance, right? It had a very brief window basically yeah. from, you know, 2000 through 2006 in which it made up a lot of lost ground. But if you actually look at that approach to investing, yeah. it's been an unmitigated disaster yes. for, you know, the past 30 years. Yeah. Um, and it always sounds far more rational, right? I mean, who, who, who wouldn't be? Pro value, right? I mean, who wants who wants to be the momentum guy? That makes you sound like a moron. The bottom line is that value is subjective. So when someone is telling you that something is a really great value, well, you gotta go back and do your own research. Sometimes it's true that something is a value because the market hasn't fully appreciated what it's worth. But other times something is cheap because it's not a good look and it's only gonna go lower. And that's what we call a value trap. The name of the game though is seeing what's gonna be more valuable down the line. And if you want help doing that, then make sure you subscribe to Real Vision. I'll talk to you next week.